I have to sing because of the stupid microphone. Uh, anyway, <laughs> good day ladies and gentlemen. My name is Timo and today I'm going to continue something Stephen Brown started two days ago. You probably know who he is if you are into fountain pens and if you know what YouTube is. Uh, if you don't, um, well, uh, do a Google search on SBRE Brown, uh, which are his initials and his uh, last name, I suppose. And uh, watch the videos. Okay, well, two days ago, he introduced us to his uh, slim black fountain pens. He has 11 of them. And um, I thought that is a very good idea. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing today. I'm going to show you my uh, slim black fountain pens. Um, I don't have as many, of course, because uh, Stephen Brown's collection is, I, I think, uh, I think he said he has less than 200 pens, uh, but I think it's more, maybe, from, from watching all the videos and stuff, I, I think he has more than 200 pens. And I don't, definitely. Um, okay, so I'm just going to show you the five slim black fountain pens I have. Um, I'm not a, a big fan of slim black fountain pens. My, my black fountain pens usually are huge, and the small fountains, fountain pens I have are either green or red or demonstrators or... Um, silver, um, but not black. Apart from the five fountain pens, I'm going to show you now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Black Slim Pen Show. Now, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you every single pen, and then I will do a writing sample, just the way Stephen Brown did, but with worse handwriting. But first, let me place a pen here. Most of you know, many of you own one of those. This is a Lamy Safari. You know how big it is? It's not very big. It's not small either. I think it's perfect for size comparisons. And let me put another pen on the table. This is a Caveco Sport. This is maybe the most popular short pen on the market today. All right, let's start with hmm, the cheapest one. Here it is. It is a Hero 616, a Parker 51 look-alike. It is slim, it is nice, it has a hooded nib. Let me try to show you this because this camera will not be able to focus. All right, oh, this looks horrible. A hooded nib just like the Parker 51. It's made entirely of plastic apart from the cap and this bit that covers the well you could call this converter I'm not sure. Um, well this bit that covers uh, the sack. There's a pressure bar that's not very useful at all. Actually, if you want to fill this uh, pen, it's much easier to to um, get rid of this bit and uh, hold the pen into the ink and just squeeze the sack with your fingers. Um, because using the, the pressure bar, it will take ages and it will not fill completely. It is very easy to take this pen apart. Inside the sack, you might be able to see a breather tube and if you push the breather tube then you, then you will push out the nib and the feed as well. You can take this pen apart completely uh, which I will not do right now. Plastic, cheap, I paid uh, 15 euros for 10 of them. Nevertheless quite a good pen. The next pen is a Miffy. Oh, let me place the Parker here for size comparisons. Uh, Parker, huh? the hero. The next pen is a Miffy. You might not know this brand because Miffy, Miffy isn't a fountain pen brand. Miffy is a, a bunny, a cute little bunny. This is my wife's favorite pen, believe it or not. It is very small, it is very, very slim. 
it's probably made for children's hand, but well, maybe also for Asian women age, whatever. <laughs> I just noticed maybe this is not really made for children's hands because you can't easily get the cap off. Uh, there's there's very much resistance. Um, I doubt that young children can easily do that. Um, but you can post the cap perfectly. You can post the pen. This is very nice and this is absolutely necessary because the pen is uh, too short unposted to comfortably write with. This pen also has a hooded nib. This pen also is uh, rather inexpensive. I paid about two euros for this one. The hooded nib is very nice, I dare say. And it actually doesn't write too bad. You will see that on the writing sample later. This pen also is a... What did I say? This pen is a... <laughs> Uh, converter filler. It comes with um, a very small converter that holds about 0.3 milliliters of ink and many other converters won't fit. This pen is so slim most converters are too thick to fit in there. Alright, so much about the Miffy. Bye bye Miffy. Bye bye Kiba. Okay, to the next pen. This one is more expensive than the ones before, but not by much. This is a wrong pen. This pen is more expensive than the ones before, <laughs> but not by much. Uh, this is a Pilot uh, 78G, made of plastic as well, by the way. The Miffy is partially made of metal, the section, maybe the cap, uh, the body, the barrel is made of plastic. This pen is made of plastic. It feels rather cheap to me. It comes with a squeeze type converter. You can just squeeze uh, here um, and ink will gush out of uh, the nib and feed. No, actually it's just ordinary squeeze type converter. Put the pen into the ink uh, pot, squeeze color times, put it out and it's loaded. Alright, plastic. I don't like the nib very much. You will see this later. It's not as bad I, as I, I thought it was, but it's not very good either, in my opinion. In my very personal opinion. I know this pen is very popular. This is a fine um, steel nib, just like the other ones. Uh, this one looks golden. I don't think it is gold plated. It's just made to look this way somehow. All right. Pen number four. This is a Pelican M150. This is a piston filler which is very nice. I like those much more than cartridge or converter fillers. Uh, those are very easy to take apart and very easy to clean. You can actually just screw the nib and uh, section unit uh, out of the pen and you could uh, replace it by another nib. Um, this one is a M size nib. You could just screw this out and put an F nib or double broad nib or whatever inside. Uh, it's very easy to clean this way as well. The whole pen is made of resin, maybe plastic, maybe, I have no idea. Uh, the nib, by the way, I forgot to mention, this pen is about 15 to 20 years old. I got it for about 40 D mark, which is uh, 20 euros. It's definitely much more expensive now. As you can tell, most of the gold plating of the nib is gone. Well, that's just what happens with those pens. All right, let's go to pen number five. The last pen is very, very special because it is a Caveco Spezial fountain pen Germany. That's what it says there and that's what it is. 
What's so special about this pen? Well, it is really slim. Let's take the... Lamy for comparison. The Lamy is definitely a lot thicker than this one. Um, when I first got this pen, I thought, how is a converter gonna, uh, gonna fit in there? But it does, somehow. It's made of metal. It's very robust. It's very, well, you can sit on it, you can jump on it. It will not break. Um, it has this Caveco sign on the cap and it has threads on the back end to post the pen. Okay, what I like about this pen is there's an, this is only a small detail but I like it very much, there's an o-ring here so you can align the nib with the logo and you can align the facets of the cap to the facets of the octagonal body. What I don't like is that there's no o-ring on the back side so when you post this pen the facets will never be aligned. Some people might not care, I actually do. This also is a cartridge converter pen. It comes with a uh, standard um, cartridge that holds about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 milliliters of ink. The nib, stainless steel. This is the smoothest nib I have. I'm just gonna say it now because later when doing the writing sample, I will only be able to laugh because it feels so great writing with this pen. Okay, you could take this pen apart easily just by, well, actually I've done most of it already. You can just screw out the nib and feet section, nib and feet and feet housing bit, uh, just like with a Pelican and uh, change it. Um, there are, those snips are available in um, different sizes and you can just buy them and replace the one you have with another one. Okay, those are the five pens. Let's show them one more time. Actually, let's show especially the barrels to see the thin or thickness. Now if my camera was parallel to the pens this would be a lot more useful. And here's the Lamy. Looks thicker than most of them actually. I, uh, um, it doesn't seem like that on the camera but it is thicker than the, than the Pilot. And length. You can tell all of those pens are longer than the Caveco Sport. Maybe uncapped, the Miffy will, uh, even the Miffy is longer. Okay, let's do the writing sample as long as my battery is still last. The writing sample, the same order of pens as before. Uh, you can, of course, pro post uh, the Hero 616. You don't have to. I think it's long enough for most people. But should you have very, very large hands, it's good to know that you can post it and it will be even longer. So, it is a Hero 616 with an F nip. And I promise you a bad handwriting and there it is. I wonder how my teachers could read this. The quick brown fox has maybe some line variation. Maybe it doesn't. No, it does not have line variation. I mean, just a tiny bit, but you can't take, can't seriously say this is this is line variation. No, 
not much. This pen is four, three, two, one, wet. Believe it, believe it or not, it is wet. Uh, by the way, the ink used is uh, Lamy Blue because uh, Lamy Blue is um, very well behaved and it is very boring and I have to get rid of it somehow. Okay, pen number two is the Miffy. This is going to be a bit difficult for me because this pen is so thin, so slim, so small. Hmm. Uh, can hardly write with this. This is a Miffy, uh, no model. It is a, a whatever. It is a a bunny. Uh, sad bunny, in this case. Um, this might be an F nib or a Japanese M nib. Oh, actually, this is pretty smooth. This is smoother than the Hero 616. Well, it costs about 30% more, so it should be. Line variation. Well, not really, really trying here, but uh, just this is not what I would call line variation. Ugh. Wettity, <laughs> whatever. Four, three, two, one. Wet. Uh, by the way, the paper is um, Clairefontaine 90 grams paper. So let's go to pen number three. This is a bit thicker. Thanks, God. Um, this is a thin, as you can tell, a pointed, I mean, the pen itself is thicker. Uh, pointed 78G with an F nib and in my opinion a very very narrow line oh my god <laughs> this is good for work Ugh. but not for fun writing um, yeah my work I, I need a pen that writes very narrow lines so let's see if we can squeeze out some line variation and it is better than I thought it was. I thought there was absolutely nothing, but there's only close to absolutely nothing. The nib is very springy, very flexible kind of, but uh, the tines don't open up. So this feels like a soft writer, but when it comes to line variation, it looks better here, but it's actually not very much. Is this pen a wet pen? I have no idea yet. Let's try it doesn't. There are some white bits in there. One, zero. It is wet, but not as wet as the other ones where there were ah, huge patches of wetness, <laughs> so to speak. Um, well, whatever. Pen number four. This is a I'm gonna post this one because it's also very short. This is a Pelican M150 with an M nib that's definitely a lot broader than the ones before. Oh, yeah, better. This is better. Line variation. This pen is rather smooth. I don't know how the nibs on those pens nowadays are because this one is, as I said before, 15 to 20 years old. And as you can see, it offers a lot more line variation uh, than the other ones. No, no, it doesn't get thinner than this. Hmm. Yeah, but this is not bad at all. This is good. Is this a wet pen? 
nice even patch so it should be wet someone's outside one two zero this is probably the wettest of them all so far maybe maybe the Caveco Special can top this we will have to try oh by the way before I forget um, this is not this actually all of this is uh, the same ink this is all uh, Lamy Blue and uh, this now is J. Herbin Perle Noir. Alright, this is the. I knew it. Uh, this is a Caveco spe special special. This doesn't look good, I'm sorry. I know it doesn't matter, and I'm not gonna be able to improve this a lot. But this pen. Caveco oh, Not much better Caveco Special with an F nib The F is pretty broad in this case uh, There's not much difference between the Pelican M and the Caveco F nib Okay this uh, takes some some getting used to. This uh, pen is so smooth. Uh, you know, when when pens are too smooth, they sometimes get a li little bit hard to control. Um, this is uh, smooth. It's still controllable, um, but it's 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 on the edge to not to not being uh, controllable anyway. Okay, uh, line variation. I don't expect much here, but actually. Definitely not as much as with the Pelican, but the nip is not as much a nail as I thought it would be. Okay, this looks good. Now I should be more careful once again. Uh, whatever. Three, two, one, zero, minus one. This is wet. This is not as wet as um, the Pelican. Maybe that's because uh, it's it's Jay Abel ink and this is uh, Lamy ink. Maybe the Lamy ink is wetter than the Jay Abel. I, I have no idea. But there already was uh, this ink in there, so well, that's the way it is. Okay, that's it. Five slim black pants. All of them worth their money definitely um, I'm just gonna repeat this this one was 150 in euros this was about 2 euros this was about 20 euros nowadays maybe 60 70 euros well you could get a M200 instead uh, but if you have very very small hands uh, this might be uh, the better pen for you um, 78 g for about uh, 8 or 9 euros and the Caveco Special for about um, 70 I think I paid I think I only paid 60 but the standard price but 70 or 80 euros um, you should be able to get it for 70 at least so um, if you have uh, slim black pants um, well why not make a video yourself that would be very nice thank you very much for watching bye bye